General, thank you for being willing to do this, and, and thank you for your career. I'd like to go back to something the uh, chairman mentioned right up front. You and I have talked about privately, both in this confirmation and in your prior one. Uh, General Mattis said that the greatest threat to national security is the federal debt. And you talk about that a consistent funding of the military and the dependence upon that could make a dramatic improvement, not only in readiness, but in moving to a, a new national defense strategy. Uh, yet there are some who are talking about a one-year CR right now uh, for next year. And it looks to me like there's several ramifications. I'd like, to, I'd like to, to add a little more color to this. First of all, a one-year CR would delay the pay raise for our women and men um, that uh, the President has asked for, and I think even the, the House uh, proposal is considering. Uh, it would delay one full year the implementation of the new defense strategy, which would mean that next year we would be operating under a defense strategy that was developed three years ago by the prior administration. Uh, it would slow down our, and, and reverse a lot of the, the benefits that you guys have gained over the last two years in readiness. Uh, it would absolutely slow down for one full year a lot of the new programs that you've already approved and we've already approved for uh, recapping and modernization that you just talked about. The thing we haven't talked about is rationalization. You guys have already found at least $4 billion of programs that you don't want to spend money on that a one-year CR would require you to spend on. Right. Would you add a little more color to exactly how draconian this is to the long-term effectiveness of our defense and realize that uh, last year was the first year in a decade that we have not uh, asked the military to start the fiscal year under a continued resolution. The supply chain got consistent. That has one contributor to how you guys have improved readiness over the last uh, year or so. I'd love you to add a little more color to that for this committee. Just briefly, Senator, the uh, one-year CR at least to my knowledge, has never actually been done. That's true. Uh, and so we're actually, I think, would be in uncharted territory yes, if sir. we went there. Uh, and CRs in general, I think, are a very ineffective and inefficient use of the taxpayers' dollars. And we're all supposed to be stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. We're keenly aware of that. But with CRs, what ends up happening is, at least my experience has been as a chief staff of the Army, is the price points of products and services go up because you can't guarantee your cash flow to the uh, to the uh, industrial partner that you're working with, the commercial partner that you're working with. So I think CR in general, uh, one year or one month, is a, is a poor way to do business. Uh, having said that, I think that the CR would have negative impact as I, uh, uh, in, in terms of training, manning, and equipping, procurement, uh, modernization, spare parts, maintenance, end strength, uh, pay and benefits, et cetera. I think uh, those are the real tangible pieces, but there's an intangible as well. Uh, which is the message it sends to adversaries, allies, and most importantly, in my view, uh, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines of the Joint Force. I, th I think it sends a terrible message to them. Yes, sir. Over the long term, do you agree that China and, and their regional um, uh, rebuilding of their military is uh, the, the, probably the largest of the, of the five main threats that we have facing the country going over the long term? I think absolutely. I think China is the main challenge to the U.S. national security over the next 50 to 100 years. I, I think it's the... Uh, I think some historian in, in, in you know, 21, uh, uh, think about 19 is, is going to look back at this century and write a book, and the central theme of the story is going to be the relationship between the United States and China. Yes, sir. Do you think we can win the next arms race if it's mano a mano between the United States and China? Well, I hope we don't have an arms race, Thank you. Senator. With regard to their Belt Road Initiative and their Made in China 2025, um, my experience with that part of the world having lived over there is that they generally historically don't tell their adversaries what they're going to do unless they've made a determination that they either don't have the wherewithal or the will to stop them. Um, when they publish Made in China 2025, do you interpret it that way? Uh, I do, and, and they're using trade as leverage to achieve their national security interests, and the One Belt Road is a part of that. Yes, sir. It's part of a broader program. Specifically, with regard to what they're doing with port investments around Africa mm -hmm. uh, and the Indio Indian Ocean, sure. but also in South America as well. There are over 50 port investments that they've made with proprietary loans. We now see in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and also Karachi and Pakistan, where they've actually foreclosed and are now militarizing those two ports. Yeah. In addition to what they've done in Djibouti, um, what's your plan as uh, chairman to, uh, to address that sort of global expansion with regard to the PLA and their commercial interest as well? I, I think uh, China has expanded throughout uh, all the regions of the globe, and they're in clear competition. They're, they're primarily in competition for resources uh, in order to uh, build and improve their military and in order to fund and, and uh, fuel their, their uh, economy. Um, 
I think that what we need to do is continue to uphold the norms of the international order that's been in place for the last seven decades. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and where those are violated, you know, stand up and be counted against it. Well, you have my full support, sir. Thank you for being willing to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.